Hello, hello guys, and welcome to my Magicka Nightblade build video. This is a very, very high damage Magicka Nightblade build. It's pretty much a gank spec. I don't know how to put it any other way. It actually has pretty awesome sustain. It's got a great amount of healing power and a ton of burst damage. I'm sure as you guys have seen in the footage here. Um, if you guys like how I kind of set up the beginning of this video and you maybe want to see more with a little bit of uh, an edited start, Go ahead and give that video a like. Let me know that you guys like that. You know, throw it in the comments there. If you guys think that maybe we should go back to the other starts, let me know as well. We can just do the plain old intro too. But anyway, guys, without further ado, let's jump into that build. Okay, so let's take a look at the build. So to start off, we are a High Elf Nightblade. I think High Elf is the best race choice for this build, um, simply because they get the elemental damage bonus, which is great for our enchants. Um, and they also uh, get the Max Magicka and the Magicka Recovery bonus. Um, you can go with Breton, also a good choice, but it's not going to hit as hard. Dark Elf will hit similarly as hard, but will not have as much regen. So I think High Elf is the best bet for uh, this build. Um, our Max Mag is coming in at just under 34k. Not very high Max Mag, but we're not using a damage shield outside of Healing Ward. So it's not a huge deal that this is on the lower side. Um, our Max Health is 25k. Pretty great for light armor. Honestly, 25k is pretty awesome. Would be a little bit higher if we had more tri-stat glyphs on. And then our max stamina is just under 12k. Also, this would be about 12.5k if we had some more stamina um, from our tri-stat glyphs. But I don't have this build uh, fully tri-statted either. Um, our Magicka recovery is 1800 stamina recovery coming in at 1049. When we buff up, our Magicka recovery actually comes up to 2029. And a little bit better on the resto bar. Great Magicka recovery on this build. Um, on top of it, we are running the Restoration Staff, so you have awesome Magicka sustain between those two. Stam sustain at over 1k is also fantastic. It's going to be absolutely great, um, just allowing you to roll, etc. And we use a lot of cloak on this build, so having this much recovery means that we should have quite a great amount of stam sustain. On our front bar, you can see when we buff up um, with our spell damage here, we're at 2,853 spell damage at 67% spell crit. A huge amount of spell crit on this build. We are playing a super heavy crit build. And uh, when we look at our Torx Pact, we get 587 base spell damage. So another 800 on top. That means fully buffed, we get up to 3,600 spell damage with our almost 34k Magicka on this build. So not like anything super nuts. The old damage build actually had better um, offensive stats here. However, we make up with the lack of offense here by having that huge crit value. Um, as well as this patch, we have a 10% crit damage bonus from the Sigic uh, Race Against Time skill. So this patch, we actually have uh, the same amount of damage with much, with much better healing thanks to the fact that we have this huge amount of spell critical here. Um, so our spell resist and our crit resist when we buff are also pretty decent. 19k spell resist and not so bad and then 16k crit resist almost 17k when we buff up. That's not super terrible. We are in light armor so uh, above 16k isn't too terribly bad for light armor. Our crit resist is coming in at 2.1k. Awesome amount of crit resist. If you want you can drop a little bit of crit resist on this build and run more well fitted. Um, but I think 2k is kind of the sweet spot. For the Mundus, we are using the Thief, and the Thief was chosen because this is actually the Mundus that's going to increase all damage and healing on this build. If we go for anything but crit chance, we end up only doing damage, and uh, we neglect the healing side of it. So I actually decided to go with the crit chance simply for that damage and healing bonus, and I think this is honestly a really good choice. It works really well. I've been hitting really hard and consistently critting and getting really huge heals off my heals thanks to the big crits, so... I'm enjoying uh, using the Thief. If you want to go more damage focus, you can definitely go with something like the Lover or the Shadow. We are a Vampire. Um, you don't really have to be a Vampire for this build. It definitely is nice because you get the bonus speed sneak while you're just in crouch as opposed to out of cloak. So it can be good from a sustain perspective for just kind of crouching around open world. Also, the resources it gives is nice and Undeath pairs really well with Healing Ward, which is our primary heal. So that's why I've gone with it. But uh, Vampire is definitely just optional for this spec. And then finally, for the food that we're using, we are using the Witch Mother's Potent Brew. Definitely the food you want to use. We're going to get the Magicka Recovery, the Max Magicka, and the Max Health. Now, if you want, you can use the Gold Food here. It's just going to give you a little bit more Max Stat. Totally up to you guys, though. 
And then for the potion that we use, I would definitely recommend you use these Essence of Detection. It's going to give you Major Sorcery, which is the buff that we don't come by on this build. So that this is going to give us 100% um, uptime on our Major Sorcery. Also give us a huge amount of Magicka and the Magicka Recovery bonus, which is awesome. And that's Stealth Detect. 15.7 seconds of 20 meters of Stealth Detect. Absolutely fantastic. I would highly recommend it. Highly recommend it. Um, very nice for fighting enemy night blades and this uh, radius increases if you use mage light as well So you can actually make the radius really huge and just have a big bubble of no stealth around you So very nice for the night blade v night blade fighting if you can't afford these bad boys Or you don't want to make them or don't want to pay for it Then you can definitely just go with spell power and max magicka potions the alliance drought you can buy them at any keep in pvp um, taking a look at the gear that we're using for this build Let's start off with the first set. You guys know it. Five pieces of Torx packed, just like the old damage build. Absolutely fantastic set. Spell damage, max health, spell resist. We like that spell damage. The other two are kind of defensive focused, but it's not so bad because of that five piece. Decrease weapon enchantment cooldown and increase potency by 30%. That is absolutely huge for the weapon enchantment. Here you can look when we buff up with our, uh, with our minor berserk buff. 6,551 shock damage on our infused Torx packed uh, Inferno staff. That is massive. On a 1.5 second cooldown, this is just going to add huge amounts of burst on top of every single combo that you do. Very, very, very nice uh, for the Torx pack build. And if we look at the other side of it too, when we run the buffing enchant, the buffing enchant gets a big buff as well, bringing us up to 587 weapon and spell damage um, on it. Well, so this is also a really, really nice buff that the Torx pack set gives to us offensively and healing-wise as well. Um, the next set that we're pairing with the Torx pack, of course, is five pieces of Amberplasm, an absolutely fantastic set for the Magnite Blade. If you don't have access to Amberplasm, you can definitely just go with five Shackle Breaker here, um, but I do think Amber is the better choice because the sustain is really nice. Um, so Amber is going to be great because the 2, 3, 4 piece giving us very nice offensive stats, max magicka, spell crit, and spell damage. And then we get huge amounts of regen on that 5 piece. Almost, uh, almost 500 regen in total off the 5 piece on this set. So just a huge amount of max stat po pooling into our sustain. Um, so it's going to be really, really nice for this build. And then finally, uh, the last two sets that we're wearing are 1 piece Slime Craw and 1 piece Ice Heart. Uh, so there you go. Maybe I caught you guys a little bit off guard with this, but definitely the way to go, I think, now for the Torx pack build. Access to the 10% crit damage bonus that we get from Race Against Time is going to be super fantastic um, just for playing the crit game on a Torx pack build. Enchants can crit, uh, so this is uh, one way to viably increase the amount of damage that an enchant will do is to increase your crit chance or your crit damage or both. So that is why we have gone with the spell crit on the shoulder and helm here. This is not only going to be great for our outgoing damage, but also great for our healing as well. So as I had mentioned for your weapons, you definitely want to go infused for both weapons on the Torx pack spec. It's going to be absolutely great. Um, the enchant on the back bar, of course, is going to be the weapon spell damage. Absolutely fantastic for Torx pack. And then on the front bar, the reason we've gone with the shock damage enchant is because it, uh, of course, has a chance to apply minor vulnerability. And, of course, it can crit. Don't be tempted to go Oblivion here. Oblivion cannot crit, and it will not be good for this style of Torx pack build. You can use Oblivion for a Torx pack spec, but you don't want it to be crit focused like this one is. Um, for the necklace and jewelry, we have gone with two pieces of Swift and one piece of infused. And then the enchants on these bad boys are all spell damage. Now the reason I only did two swift on this guy is because we actually get quite a lot of speed bonus from running concealed weapon on our back bar here. And uh, we actually didn't need to get a whole bunch more speed. We're very mobile already. So I thought two swift would be just fine. And then going with one piece infused just to bulk up the lack of uh, damage and healing that we give up from going for the swift here. So there you go. For the gear that we're wearing, I have a mix of well-fitted and impenetrable on. Uh, I also have two divines here, but ideally you want to run four well-fitted and three impenetrable on this build. Um, the divines, of course, are just bad traits. Uh, I just don't have the traits that I need for this build. Um, and then for the enchants on the gear, I would recommend going with the tri-stat hacky joes if you can afford it. If it's too expensive, try to just tri-stat the big pieces. Um, and then you can leave the little ones on Max Magicka if, uh, if it's just a cost thing. So there you go. That is the gear for you guys.
So let's take a look at the abilities that we're using on this build. So to start off, we have got um, our front bar. We'll actually start on our front bar. The first ability that we have is Swallow Soul. And uh, I'll buff up so you guys can see the tooltip on it as well. We're going to pot for everything. Um, 8,776 magic damage. This is going to be your primary spammable. It will heal you for 30% of the damage inflicted every 2 seconds for 10 seconds. And because we have such a huge crit rate, this is actually a really powerful heal over time that we get from using this ability. So it's pretty much like having a Magicka Vigor up, um, especially because we're critting so much. Like, you can expect 2k plus, uh, heals every 2 seconds from your Swallow Soul, which is quite a lot of healing. Um, so really, really great ability, I think, uh, for this style of Nightblade. Um, but anyway, this is going to be your primary spammable for the build. And uh, you have a lot of damage at a distance with just your heavy or light attack into Swallow Soul. Huge amounts of burst. So this is quite a deadly, deadly build for that distance damage. And Swallow Soul is going to be your primary skill for it. The next skill that we have is Flame Reach. This is going to be your primary stun. Really fantastic stun uh, from the Flame Staff here. It's also going to knock your opponent back, so it makes it kind of a lengthy stun as well, which makes it even more deadly for PvP. And then on top of it, um, having this ability slotted, of course, is going to give us access to our Fire Staff passives for that 8% bonus damage. Super fantastic for the Fire Staff uh, to get that. And then finally, for the next skill, we have Race Against Time. This is the crit damage buff that we've been talking about, the new Sigic Order skill. It'll give us a 10% bonus to the critical damage that we deal, and it will also increase our movement speed by 30%. Um, while it increases our movement speed, the cost of sprint is also reduced by 50%. So not only is this a fantastic buff for all our damage, but it's also going to be a great buff for our movement. It's going to help us stay mobile on the mag blade. When we're in sprint, we're going to be approaching speed cap, and this is going to allow us to have a very cheap sprint on the mag blade, especially mixed in with our well-fitted and uh, CP passives. We'd be looking at around an 80% reduced cost sprint on this build, so we actually would be able to utilize this skill really well. All right, the next ability that we have is Merciless Resolve. This is going to be great for our damage. Another buff for that minor Berserk, 8% increase to the damage that we deal. And then on top of it, we shoot that super powerful Spectral Bow. Um, we'll buff up for this bad boy too so you guys can see the tooltip. Coming in at almost 19k on it. Super nice. And then plus the Torx Pact Enchant, this will hit really hard at a distance. This is going to be your hardest hitting um, ability on this build by quite a bit. If we compare tooltips here, um, 15k for Soul Harvest versus the almost 19k on Merciless. So quite a bit higher than our ultimate. Um, but you can only use it once every five light attacks. So there is that. You can't just spam this ability. But it's a super great skill nonetheless. This is going to be your excellent uh, distance target takedown. Huge amounts of damage with this in your enchant. Absolutely nuke somebody. The next skill that we have is Inner Light. This is slotted here just for uh, buff purposes. It's going to give us access to Major Prophecy for that 10% spell crit, as well as give us a 5% bonus to the amount of Magicka that we have. So very nice for that too. Um, also, it gives us a bit of Stealth Detect. So this with our potion can give us a total of 26 meters of Stealth Detection, which kind of sounds OP because it kind of is. That is a huge amount of Stealth Detection. So uh, it's kind of trolly to use this with the pot, I kind of enjoy it. It's great for fighting other Nightblades. The next ability that we have is, of course, the ultimate, Soul Harvest. And uh, this is going to be the primary ultimate that you use for bursting people down. It deals huge amounts of damage, and it's very, very cheap. I went with the Soul Harvest morph simply because it generates more ultimate when you get kills. This build hits really hard, and we have a really nice stun off our Flame Reach here. So we didn't really need to go for the stun morph here. And I opted out of that simply for uh, building more ultimate so I could chain kills easier back to back. This build chains kills really well because, honestly, you hit like a cannon, and you're very stealthy. And if you're quick, this is, I think, the ultimate of choice to get those really fast wiping kills where you kill a whole bunch of players back to back. That being said, you can go for the stun morph. It's also a very good morph. It'll deal a little bit less damage, though, because it is not a magic damage attack and our CP focus on magic damage for this build. And then finally, the defile that this ultimate gives is absolutely fantastic. Let's you move in for that kill even easier. On the restoration staff bar, our first ability that we have is Shadow Image. This is going to be your trolley kind of anti-snare gameplay ability. 
Um, you always want to make sure you keep your shadow image down while you're in combat, because if you get snared or stuck in a tough location or immobilized, you can just teleport out of there and it's going to save your bacon. Shadow image plus roll dodge equals love for the Magblade. Trust me, guys, this is going to get you out of those tough situations that Magblade really struggle with. Super fantastic. And this patch, the fact that we don't need a target to put the shade down means that you will always have a plan B to get out of those snares. So it works really, really, really well. That being said, though, with our cloak, thanks to the swifty buffs that we have, we're actually quite fast in cloak. So even if we get snared, we can still maintain quite a bit of movement speed in our cloak, too. Um, the next ability that we have is Concealed Weapon. This is purely here for that movement speed bonus that we have. We don't really use this in combat, as the Fire Staff stun is going to be uh, a distance stun, and it's going to be a little bit more um, reliable. Uh, but that being said, the Concealed Weapon is an option if you want to use it for a stun, but mostly just here for that uh, movement speed bonus. The next skill that we have is Healing Ward. This is going to be your primary heal for this build. Now, like I had mentioned, we actually get a lot of healing from Swallow Soul, which you should have up almost all the time as long as you're remaining somewhat offensive during the fight. So Healing Ward plus Swallow Soul is going to be a great amount of healing between those two. Healing Ward taking the slot of your burst heal. Very, very good burst heal on this build. The heal that it does crits a lot, so it actually has quite a lot of healing power. If the shield itself actually manages to expire and last the whole duration and you get the shield heal, it is almost always a guaranteed full heal because of the high crit rate that we have on this build. It's going to be a massive heal from that shield. So this is actually a super great heal. And not just that, but we can actually use this to heal allies as well, which is super awesome too. Um, and then finally, the next skill we have is Efficient Purge, the third kind of defensive healing ability that we have um, just to kind of uh, make us resistant to everything in PvP. A big thing that Magblade can struggle with is getting marked. And then, of course, there is the slowed set, which is pulling Magblades out of stealth. I don't believe it's supposed to do that, but I could be wrong. Maybe Zenimax just wants to break the set of rules that they usually seem to follow. That being said, though, um, I think Efficient Purge is definitely a must-have for a Magblade, especially one like this that needs to have that high stealth uptime. This is going to be your counter to things like, um, well mark etc that are pulling you out of stealth now something i do want to note about efficient purge is that it only removes two negative effects however the secondary effect of this ability reduces the further negative effects by 50 percent for six seconds on you this is actually a really good secondary effect if you think about it if you get hit by a dot and you use a purge and you don't purge that dot you ended up purging a heal debuff or something that dot's damage is effectively still halved from the point that you purged it because the duration of it is halved so it won't deal as much damage if you just didn't purge at all and then uh, another little fun fact too is that if you take into account something like the sorcerer's haunting curse if a sorcerer puts a haunting curse on you which you can purge and you try to purge it but it doesn't work the first explosion will go off but because you have the duration you don't take the second explosion from the haunting curse so this is just a li few little things about purge that uh, a lot of people kind of overlook I think this secondary effect of it it's a very very good skill and i honestly can't imagine playing my mag blade without purge i don't know how people do it um honestly they probably just go to the forums and rage about things instead of uh just slotting purge so i think that it is an absolute must have for mag blade and uh it's saved me a lot and then finally the last normal skill that we have is shadowy disguise this is going to be access to our cloak which is very fast we have that very speedy movement speed while we are in stealth um, and as you can see here, there it is. Very nice speedy stealth movement speed. It's going to make it very hard for people to catch us. If you change directions as you enter Cloak, people are going to have a really, really tough time just keeping an eye on you. So this is just uh, the standstill of Magblade, I think, is the Cloak. The Cloak and Magblade go hand in hand, um, at least for this playstyle. Really, really great. You'll have huge Cloak up times on this build. And uh, getting the crit out of your Cloak is also really nice. You know, we do get that guaranteed crit on our light attack, which is pretty sweet. Um, that being said, we already have a high crit rate, so we are busting a lot of crits anyway. And then finally, for the ultimate, I have gone with Soul Tether. Um, I went with Soul Tether because it is a personal favorite defensive ult of mine. Also, the huge crit rate that we have means that the amount of healing you get from this is absolutely insane when you hit a bunch of targets. You get a crazy amount of healing because it crits so much. Um, so yeah, there's that. 
but uh, it, it's not going to deal as much damage single target wise as our other ultimate will, and it's more here for the defensive purpose. If you don't want to use Soul Tether, you can definitely go for the Restoration Staff Ultimate. I had tried this as well, and I really enjoyed it. I really wanted to get it morphed uh, so we get the Major Force buff. The Major Force buff off of this Restoration Alt would actually be really great for this build, as well as the Major Protection. So you have a bit of option for your back bar what you want to use as an alt on this build as well. All right, so let's finally take a look at the champion points. In the tower tree, we got 26 Warlord and 21 in Sprinter. Um, we got a break free and we got a sprint. Big focus on Sprinter and nothing in bashing focus simply because uh, we're running race against time in a mag build. This actually makes us our, our, blah, this makes our sprint really cheap and uh, we just want to keep playing into that. We want to have a really easily accessible sprint on this Magicka build and this is how we're going to do it. In the Lover Tree, we've got 64 Arcanist, 43 Mooncalf, and 19 in Tenacity. Um, Arcanist, really nice. Honestly, it's going to give us a lot of Magicka recovery. Mooncalf, a little bit less than the Arcanist tree um, for the Stam recovery, but we are Magicka focused. And then finally, 19 in Tenacity for those heavy attacks off our Restoration Staff. Get a good return on those bad boys. And uh, the important passive here, of course, is wind running. 2% movement speed. We are playing a speed-based build, so that is awesome to get more movement speed. Just keep stacking it up. And the 10% Magicka recovery while sprinting is also really nice. Just playing into that sprint on this build as well. In the Shadow Tree, we've got 51 Tumbling and 26 Shadow Ward. Huge focus on Tumbling and a little bit less in Shadow Ward. We gotta roll a lot, and we have to block a lot in PvP. Um, even on a light armor build, you gotta roll, you gotta block. So that is why we have these points here. In the Apprentice Tree, we have got 61 Elfborn, 37 Elemental, and 32 Spell Erosion. Big focus on Elfborn here because it is actually one of the few passives that will increase your critical healing done. And it will also increase your critical damage. We have a massive crit rate on this build, so the crit damage is going to be a big focus of ours. Now, a question that you guys may have is, well, this build may not be good against someone wearing a lot of impen. And uh, yeah, the impen is going to definitely counter the crits. But if you look at the crit damage on this build, we are sitting at a 1.9 times crit damage multiplier. And if they have hard capped impen, we are still going to deal 1.4 times additional damage to them when we crit, even if they have hard capped 3k impen. So. There you go. Our crits are still going to be very effective, and the fact that this plays into healing made it a very attractive tree for me on this build. And uh, uh, just a nice little bit of even balance on the Spell Erosion and Elemental Expert here. In the Atronach tree, we have got 81 Master at Arms. Master at Arms was chosen simply because this is going to bulk up all of our outgoing damage the most, including our Torx Pact Enchants. So this is a really, really good uh, tree for this build. And then 39 Staff Expert for that heavy attack off of our uh, Destro Staff and the light attack off our Destro Staff. Just because we do hit quite hard with it and we just want to, well, continue to hit quite hard with it. The Tactician passive is actually a pretty sweet passive for this build. You're going to set a lot of people off balance with your roll dodge and you're going to do a lot of partial charged heavy attacks because the cooldown on Torx Pact is 1.5 seconds. If you just do normal light attack weaving, you will miss the occasional Torx Pact enchant proc. But if you do partial charged heavy weaves, you will get the uh, Torx Pact enchant proc every 1.5 seconds because you're timing it to land as such. And then not only that, but those partial charged heavies will stun anyone that you set off balance so you can essentially use your uh heavy attack as a stun pair it with your swallowed soul and stun an opponent and hit them really hard at the same time using the tactician passive so it is actually a really sweet passive for this build in the ritual tree we have got nothing let's move on in the Steed Tree, we've got 59 in Resistant and 61 in Ironclad. Focus, of course, on Ironclad because direct damage is going to be the... Per, well, the majority of burst damage abilities are direct damage. And then Resistant, of course, because we want to prevent enemy crit damage that we take as well. In the Lady Tree, we've got 21 Light Armor, 23 Hardy, 23 Elemental, and 20 Thick Skin. Nice even spread here, and of course we put a bit of focus into Light Armor just because we are playing a Light Armor build and we don't have a lot of physical resistance. And then finally, guys, in the Lord Tree, we have got 32 Quick Recovery and 11 in Bastion. Quick Recovery, of course, is going to bulk up the healing that we do, and Bastion's going to increase the size of the healing ward that we have, which in turn will increase the amount of healing that it does when it expires. So there you go, guys. That is the build. All right, guys, so let's do some PvP commentary. So to start off, I do want to mention that the intro clip is actually an older clip of the damage build. 
um, that I had just done in the past and kind of done a bit of an edit on. But the PvP footage that I provide here is all footage of it on Somerset in the new patch, so you get to see it in the new patch here. Um, that being said, the playstyle on the build has not changed really at all. It's just a little bit faster and... Uh, yeah, has a little bit more healing. That's about it. Anyway, so to start off here, as you can see, there is a friendly keep here. And uh, we come in here behind the yellow army. And there's another Sork here as well. And we're just going to kind of work on these yellows that we see here that are just kind of getting attacked from the players up top. So they've been trying to siege the door. And yeah, we have an easy time engaging them from stealth. Just put a huge amount of damage into all of them and uh, don't have too much issues taking them down. Now, that being said, this was filmed on Vivek during primetime NA, so it was pretty laggy on this server. Um, so you'll see me miss a, a few cancels that looks like I just really shouldn't miss, and uh, you'll also see uh, maybe opponents um, zipping around the screen a little bit too. So uh, if, if there is a bit of lag, I apologize, guys. It's just how the server unfortunately is. Um, as you can see here, we put a little bit of offensive pressure into the guys that were on the staircase, but the guys behind here had been getting rezzed, and here comes a few EP players. So we got a nice little collection of EP players coming in now, and uh, I know that they're going to engage with the rest of this group here. Having put a nice amount of work into the front of the group, seeing that they're opening up the keep as well, I decide that I'm going to start teasing the back end of the group with uh, Mad Shadow Man, who has also come here now as well. And we put a bit of work into that player there. There's the AP tick. I think Mad Shadow Man actually takes him down. And uh, I just kind of come around to the side here, just looking for targets, looking for hopefully a healer or something. Put a lot of damage into her. And uh, I try to get the attack. There you see what I was talking about, the lag. I just honestly didn't land the light attack or the swallow soul. Just couldn't cast anything on her there. So couldn't go for the kill. Um, but she also didn't cast either. So I feel like I was not the only one who was suffering from lag in that moment. But I work my way to the top of this keep. And we find a few more players here on Siege. A little bit low on Magicka, so I'm just going to sit here in Crouch, let my Magicka regen a little bit, do my buffs. There you see, nice amount of lag going into that um, Flame Reach. And then we go for the ultimate afterwards, but uh, unfortunately, a little bit of latency there. Um, this guy here, yet again, uh, this is just kind of, I think the reason it got so laggy at this particular moment is because this is when uh, the yellow had really made the push in the keep, and... And uh, they were just doing a lot of AoE fighting inside. Um, but anyway, I'm going to continue to work these guys. Get a really nice shot from a friendly ballista there. And as you can see here, we're just using the cloak, working around them, and uh, hitting them as hard as we can with a nice stun into the Swallow Soul combo as often as we can as well. There you see, we missed the first stun to the shuffle. Get the second one. And I think she actually goes down to a little bit of a ballista tick there as well um, after our stun. So, on to the next clip. Uh, we got some sewer ganks for you guys, and this build is an absolute menace in the sewers. If you guys are thinking about a build that would just excel in the sewers, this is definitely a build that would excel in the sewers. Not only is it great for open world solo PvP, it is great down here because you can really hit and run. You can go for the stones, you can hunt what, you're, what you want to hunt, and then avoid the rest. And uh, that's a big part of playing this build in the sewers. So as you can see here, I'm just kind of eyeing up this yellow group, moving around, just uh, waiting for the opportunity to hit them hard here. As you can see, they have all now shifted their focus to something on the left. I target the lower HP player, get him with a huge stun at the distance into the light attack Swallow Soul, and you see just that huge amount of burst. He did only have 15k HP, but we hit him nice and hard too. Um, so then I'm going to work my way back around to the other side of the group, and a big part of especially engaging like this, where it's fairly open and you've got a lot of players on you, you don't want to engage when they can all see you. You definitely just want to move around them, hit the tail, hit them in the weakest spot. So as you can see there, I pulled a bit of pressure and decide that I'm just going to do a bit of a loop around here to see if we can split them up and it totally works the more zealous yellow players that were uh, a little bit um, a little bit more inclined to chase me down decided to stay where I was kind of kiting around and the rest of the players here kind of moved off somewhere else so I'm going to go and take down these targets um, while those other yellow players are busy searching for nothing and there you can see we get two really nice back-to-back -back kills on these guys there and uh, this guy goes for a I think he did a bolt escape as I go for the stun on him 
and uh, it ends up just doing a weird bolt escape. And here come the other yellow players. One of them, unfortunately, is rocking the 10k Telvar set. Could be great if I could gank him, but I had engaged with him earlier, and he's very tanky. And there you see they actually just pump me with the Soul Assault, spam the AoE spell de stealth detects, and the other uh, DK player is also spamming his AoE armor buff, which has a 10 meter radius to pull you out. So those guys went, uh, they tried really hard. They actually took me down really nicely there. Great anti-stealth combo to finish me off there. Maybe should have been a little bit more defensive um, coming out of those ganks. But as you can see here, we're not going to give up. We come back for more, and uh, we're going to pick off the player who is not paying attention here. Just a little bit of pokes into him. Beautiful, beautiful little gank on him there. And the rest of the players turn around. So what I'm going to do is go this direction out and roll in that direction as I come out of stealth and then when I re-enter stealth just switch directions unfortunately they start throwing the uh, de stealth detects down as well so I decide that my best bet here is to retreat into some cover and I actually drop down the bridge on the side and loop around so I'm hoping to do the same thing as before and uh, lose the more zealous players as they uh, chase me around and work my way back around to uh, the more susceptible part of this group and it works really well. They totally aren't paying attention at all. I get a lot of damage into those two players there to take them down. Put huge damage into that Sork. And a DC Nightblade shows up, finishes her off. And uh, another couple DC players come here to just clean up the last couple yellows. And there you go. That is all that I have for footage for this build, guys. If you want to see some more, feel free to check out the original build. It has tons of footage in it as well, separate from the ones that you saw in this video. So uh, it's the same style of play, more Mag Nightblade. If that's what you want to see, go check that out. Um, if you guys liked what you saw here, feel free to hit that like um, button. And if you want, feel free to hit that subscribe button. I make a lot of content like this, so you can expect more of this stuff from me in the future. And then finally, uh, if you guys want to come catch me live on Twitch, you can. My link to my Twitch, of course, is in the description as well. And we are sponsored by What The Fast. They are a VPN for gamers. They give me 50 better ping on average to ESO. Um, if you guys have not tried out a VPN, I would highly recommend you try out What The Fast. It's a local Canadian company. It works really well. Give it a shot. It's free to try from the link in the description below as well. And that is it, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. I really hope you enjoyed the build, and have a great night.